Welcome everybody to the second half of uh, today's seminar. Um, so I'm just going to make a couple of announcements. Apologies to those of you who are there right at the start because I'm going to repeat things that Alex already said. Um, I just want to let you know that next week we'll, we'll have a, a triple bill. We're going to have a, a statistical physics and algorithms day um, where we will have talks from Dana Randall, Will Perkins and Alan Sly. Um, that's going to be the last seminar before we take a break for the summer. Um, if you're signed up to the mailing list, you'll get announcements about what will happen after the summer first and we'll try and keep the website updated. Um, as usual, we're going to be recording this seminar, so if you would like uh, not to appear or to not have your audio recorded, please make sure to keep yourself muted and to turn your video off. Um, as usual, we'll take questions in the chat, um, so it's quite useful to do that under your own name if you can. Um, and uh, Alex and I will sort of curate the questions and either take them immediately or at the end, depending on what's most appropriate. Um, and then without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Jean Bertrand. It's a huge pleasure to have you here, Jean. And Jean is going to talk about scaling exponents for step reinforced random walks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Christina and Alex as well. I uh, cannot say it's a pleasure to be uh, today in Oxford. I wish I uh, could do so, but uh, it will be for next time. Okay, so the. My talk today uh, has been motivated by uh, works of uh, Herbert Simons. Most likely, uh, you might not know very well uh, who uh, Herbert Simons was. He is uh, indeed best known for uh, his work in uh, cognitive science and uh, decision making. Um, he was also uh, an economist and uh, won the Nobel Prize, so called Nobel Prize in, uh, in economy. And uh, he's also considered as being one of the fathers of uh, artific artificial intelligence. Uh, he won the, uh, the Turin Award, which is uh, the most prestigious uh, distinction that you get in, uh, that you can get in, uh, in computer sciences. Uh, he has also a formation in, uh, not only in uh, economics, but also in mathematics and produced a, a few mathematical uh, works. And uh, actually he was uh, probably the, the first uh, to, uh, uh, to deal with uh, reinforcement or preferential uh, attachment uh, dynamics. And this is what I, I would like to, to recall now. So it's uh, 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 an algorithm which has been uh, uh, recovered by uh, many persons and uh, uh, long after Simon. So Simon's work was in uh, 1955 and it runs as, as follows. So you consider uh, a sequence of uh, different items. I denote them by X1, X2, and so on. So in, uh, in Simon's uh, work, uh, these items are words. So he's analyzing a, a, a long text uh, sequence of words. And uh, he will produce using uh, this uh, sequence of uh, items, another sequence, which I called uh, the reinforced one. And uh, this sequence depends on uh, itself on a sequence of bits that are zeros and ones. Uh, and this sequence is denoted by uh, epsilon one, epsilon two, etc. And it also always starts with a one for reasons which will be uh, clear in a moment. So the interpretation of these uh, zeros and one are as follows. Um, if you get at the end step uh, a zero, so this means that the reinforced sequence repeats one of the preceding items uh, which is picked uniformly at random. So one, you pick one of the items, uh, x hat one, etc., up, up to x hat n minus one, and you decide that this is the value taken by x hat n. And otherwise, uh, if epsilon n equals one, then you have an innovation in the sense that uh, you define x hat n as uh, the next new item in your sequence. So let me uh, give a, an example for a, a simple sequence, uh, epsilon n. So this is this sequence of, uh, of bits. Um, as before, as uh, I just explained, you always start with an innovation, of course, otherwise it makes no sense. But this means that the reinforced uh, sequence x hat is constructed as follows. So first you have an innovation meaning that you pick your first item in the sequence. Then the second bit is a zero, meaning that you have a repetition and you have no choice. You are forced to, uh, to repeat x1, so you repeat x1. At the third step, uh, you have a one, meaning that you have an innovation. 
So you pick the next available item, x2. The fourth step, you have a zero, a repetition. So you pick one of the three items that you had before uniformly at random. Say you pick the second one, x1, which is x1. Then you have another repetition. Let's say that you pick the, the fourth item. So this will be again at x1. At the um, next step, you have again a repetition. And then let's say that you pick the, the third item in your sequence. So it will be x2. So you repeat x2. Then you have an innovation. So you, so far you have used x1 and x2. You will then introduce x3 and so on. The next uh, step is, uh, is a repetition. So maybe you, you repeat the, the fifth uh, item. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This is x1 and so on and so on, okay? So if you, you want to formalize this uh, a bit more, the uh, sequence you are interested in is x hat n, and you construct it as follows. So you start always with an innovation, but if at your next step uh, you have a repetition, then x uh, hat n is the same, one of the same item as you had uh, written so far, um, corresponding to an index un, which is uniform on the previous uh, indices, one to n minus one. And otherwise, uh, if you have an innovation, then uh, x hat n is the next uh, item. So uh, it's uh, given by uh, sigma uh, x sigma n, where here sigma n is the number of innovations that you have made up to the, the nth step. I must confess that there is uh, not so much of combinatorics in, uh, in my presentation, uh, much more probabilistic, but here is a, a slight connection to, uh, to combinatorial structures. Uh, you see that um, this algorithm of uh, Simon has much to do with the so-called uh, random recursive tree. So the random recursive tree is uh, one of the simplest uh, tree that you, uh, random tree that you may wish to, to construct. Uh, recursively by attaching one after the other the, the vertices. So the vertices are one, two, three, and so on. And each time you decide to attach the, the new vertex, uh, say n, at a parent which is chosen uniformly at random among the possible parents. And you do this uh, independently for the, for the different vertices. So doing so, you construct a so-called random recursive tree. And then uh, you will, uh, you will uh, just perform a kind of a percolation on it. Uh, but contrary to percolation, uh, you will delete the edges corresponding to the uh, epsilon j equals to one, not to the epsilon j equals to zero. So each time you find an innovation, epsilon j, so you remove the, uh, the edge which connects j to its parent. Sorry. And then uh, if you do so, the, the cluster, so you will uh, split your tree into uh, subtrees. And the clusters are precisely the, the families of indices at which uh, a same item is, uh, is repeated. Okay. So Simon considered uh, essentially two regimes of innovation. It's not exactly the, the way he uh, described it. But um, let's uh, stress the so-called uh, slow, uh, slow innovation regime. So that's when the number of innovation grows roughly like uh, n to the, power, uh, to the power rho for some rho which is uh, strictly less than one. It's positive, so it grows to infinity. You have infinity many innovation. But in some sense, um, after well, the, the innovation reduces, slows down, uh, with a number of steps. So I'm very uh, imprecise at this place for the, the meaning of this uh, symbol, uh, but you may think, for instance, that uh, the, the number of innovation is uh, regularly varying with some uh, exponent rho. It's, uh, it's good enough, or it's equivalent to some constant time n to the power rho, if you prefer. And the second regime is a regime of steady innovation. So you what you want is that the, uh, uh, on average, so the, when you, you divide sigma of n by n, so the, the average number of innovation when n is large is close to some q 
and Q is some parameter between zero and one. Okay. So you have two different regimes, uh, but actually we will use uh, the same parameter rho to uh, parameterize those two regimes simultaneously. So this means that in the uh, steady innovation regime, I will rather, instead of the Q, I will rather use rho uh, given by one divided by one minus Q. And this is a parameter which is then uh, uh, strictly, strictly greater than one, okay? So for rho less than one, uh, you are in the slow regime. And for rho uh, greater than one, then you are, you are in a steady innovation regime. So this may look a bit uh, awkward to, to use these uh, same, same parameter to describe the two regimes, but actually um, here is uh, the theorem uh, due to Simon. So Simon was interested in the proportion of items which have appeared exactly k times uh, at the end steps of the algorithm. So you imagine your, your text, uh, you group, you count how many uh, times a given word have appeared, and you count how many words have appeared exactly, say, five times. And when you divide it by the, uh, the total number of words which uh, occur in your text, then this quantity converges as uh, if, if your text is, uh, is modeled by uh, Simon's uh, algorithm, then it, uh, the proportion of items that have appeared exactly k times converges as n tends to infinity uh, toward this quantity, so rho, and then you have the, the beta function evaluated at k and rho plus one. Okay. Um, so for uh, rho fixed, uh, this is a probability distribution on the set of positive integers. Uh, Simon, uh, Simon, sorry, uh, called it the, the Simon, uh, the, sorry, <laughs> Simon called it the Yule distribution, but of course now it's called the uh, Yule Simon distribution. And um, well, you see that this, uh, this result does not uh, depend on whether you are dealing with a slow innovation or steady innovation. It's the same type of uh, limiting law which, uh, which occurs. To be Completely precise, actually, this is not exactly the, the result what uh, Simon proved. What he was able to prove was the convergence of the expected proportion of items towards this uh, quantity. Um, but that actually the, the convergence hold, uh, let's say, uh, in probability can be proved nowadays by uh, other uh, standard methods. Um, and this, uh, so these, uh, these Yule-Simon distribution uh, appear in a variety of settings. Uh, one important property is that they are heavy-tailed. And uh, actually, the, uh, the article by, uh, by Simon raised a uh, uh, rather uh, lengthy controversy. I mean, the, there was a lengthy discussion with Benoit Mandelbrot, and they, they argued a lot, and Mandelbrot wasn't convinced by the argument of Simon and was claiming that uh, things did not make sense when uh, Rho was uh, less than one. And uh, it, it's a bit astonishing to see that they were able to publish in the literature uh, replies and counter replies and postscripta and so on. So it lasted for maybe uh, five years. Um, so Mandelbrot was still not convinced and uh, Simon was uh, standing uh, firm on uh, his feet. In any case, uh, the result as it uh, is stated here is uh, definitely correct. Okay, so how we, will we use this, uh, this result of uh, Simon? Well, uh, for us, the items X1, X2 and so on will be ID copies of some uh, real random variable X. So they are no longer words, but random variables. And uh, my goal in this talk is to compare the asymptotic behavior of uh, two partial sums processes. So the, the random walk, which is a usual sum of uh, ID increments, X1, et cetera, plus Xn. And uh, I want to compare it with its uh, reinforced version, X hat. So when you replace the uh, Xi, by, uh, by the, the reinforced sequence. Uh, so this uh, 
This problem has been first, apparently, I'm not sure it's uh, the first study, but it's, it was certainly studied by uh, Chris Heidi, even though he didn't know the, the work by, uh, by Herbert Simon. And uh, he, um, he wrote uh, an interesting paper in the case when the bits, uh, the epsilon, epsilon n, are ID Bernoulli random variables. So you are in the steady regime. Uh, and uh, the x, the variable uh, of, your, of your steps of the, the walk, are uh, Radamacher, so plus one or minus one with probability of half. So the, in this case, the, the random walk uh, Sn is just uh, the simple symmetric random walk. And Heidi uh, pointed out uh, at a phase transition, which occurs to the, for the parameter uh, rho equals a half. So this means exactly that the Q here is equal to a half. And he proved that uh, if rho is larger than a half, uh, sorry, rho is larger than two, then you have the um, standard diffusing behavior in the sense that you renormalize your uh, reinforced random walk by uh, n to the root n. And this converges to a Gaussian uh, variable in distribution. And the, the variance, so it's always centered. And the variance uh, S square here depends on the uh, reinforcement parameter. And at the opposite, uh, if rho is uh, between one and two, so remember that rho is necessarily, uh, we are in the, the steady regime, so rho cannot be uh, smaller than, than one. So for rho between one and two, which corresponds to, uh, to q larger than, uh, than a half, um, then the, uh, you have a different normalization. So you have to rescale your uh, reinforced random walk by n to the power minus one over rho. And then the convergence takes place, uh, let's say, uh, in, uh, I think it's almost surely in the work by, by Heidi already. And the limit v here is a certain uh, random variable whose distribution is, uh, is extremely uh, difficult to characterize. I mean, one, one can say a few things, but it's, uh, uh, it's difficult to know. So it's known in particular, thanks to, to works of uh, Berkut, that this is not a, a Gaussian uh, variable. And this result by uh, Heidi has been uh, rediscovered in the physics literature in the, in the recent years. So in the setting of the so-called elephant random walk. So the elephant random walk is exactly the, the random walk, uh, the reinforced random walk, which I just uh, introduced. And it's called the elephant random walk because elephants have memories and physicists were, uh, were interested in uh, studying random walk with, with memory. Um, and this, um, this phase transition has been uh, shown recently to be uh, valid in the more general setting when uh, X is just uh, centered with finite variance uh, random variable. So in, uh, in the case where the uh, uh, central limit theorem holds. In the case with infinite variance, uh, and still when the bits are given by uh, I.D. Bernoulli, uh, Sylvia Businger observed that the similar transi phase transition occurs uh, when the uh, typical step X has a symmetric uh, alpha stable distribution. But then the, first, uh, the critical parameter is different. So she, um, she observed that if a row is now larger than a half, then you normalize your reinforced random walk by a factor n to the power one over minus alpha. And this converges in distribution to uh, a stable, uh, an alpha stable random variable. And at the opposite, uh, if now, sorry, if not, oh, <laughs> I have to be very, very, uh, very careful with, uh, with my computer. It's very sensible. So um, if now rho is uh, between one and alpha, then you have a, uh, an almost sure convergence. As, uh, you have to rescale your uh, reinforced random walk by a factor uh, n to the power minus one uh, uh, over rho. And the uh, convergence is, uh, again, almost sure convergence towards a non-degenerate stable limit. 
So here I will be mainly interested in the case when the uh, bits are fairly general. Actually, it simplifies a bit uh, the problematic. And uh, I will just assume that the uh, original random walk S has a scaling exponent so in the sense that uh, you have a stable uh, central limit theorems. So I'm assuming that for some uh, exponent alpha, which we know is necessarily between zero and two, when you renormalize your uh, original random walk by n to the power minus one over alpha, then this converges in distribution to a non-degenerate uh, distribution, uh, non-degenerate variable y, and y here is known to have a stable, uh, alpha stable distribution. And the, the main question I'm interested in is to know whether uh, similar properties then hold for the reinforced random walk S star. In particular, what, is, uh, what are the relations between the exponent of the reinforced random walk and the original random walk, and of course, also of the uh, reinforcement parameter? And uh, a summary of the, the results are in this, uh, in this picture. So there are essentially uh, four domains. So the, the, the picture represents the formula that you get for the uh, uh, scaling uh, exponent alpha star, alpha, sorry, alpha hat of the reinforced random walk in terms of the parameters of your model. So in terms of the uh, uh, index of stability alpha to which your random walk, original random walk is attracted and the reinforcement parameter rho. Okay, uh, so you, you remember that uh, we use the same parameter rho for both for the slow innovation and for the steady innovation. So um, let's start with, uh, with this part here. So you are uh, with the uh, alphas which are larger than the uh, uh, reinforcement parameter rho, we are in a slow innovation regime. So this means that uh, the, the number of innovation grows essentially like n to the power rho. And in this domain, uh, the uh, step reinforced random walk has a scaling exponent alpha. So essentially this is what uh, one calls the uh, ballistic regime. Uh, the, the, the step reinforced random walk grows essentially linearly uh, as n to tens to infinity. I, I will give later on uh, precise results, but it's, I think the, the diagram is uh, already informative. Uh, on the other hand, uh, this part here, so it corresponds for the steady, steady innovation regime, uh, so rho between uh, rho larger than one. And if uh, rho is less than uh, alpha, then uh, you do not see difference between the uh, scaling exponent of the step reinforced random walk is the same as the scaling exponent of your initial random walk. If you increase uh, a bit alpha, uh, then you have a different domain at which the, the scaling exponent is now given by the reinforcement parameter. And last on this part here, so it's again in the snow innovation regime, uh, you have another formula which depends both on the uh, scaling exponent alpha and the reinforcement parameter rho of uh, your process. Let me stress also that um, the results are of different nature depending on whether you are above or below the diagonal. So here is a diagonal uh, alpha equals rho. The, the two results here are strong results in the sense that we will see that the convergence of the rescale processes take place in uh, let's say probability or even almost surely. Whereas under the diagonal, these uh, two families of results here uh, take place in distribution. And they do not take place almost surely. Okay, so I, I will now give uh, formally the, the four theorems which correspond to the, 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 four, do, the four domains of, uh, of this picture, uh, starting with this one, and then we will continue uh, clockwise with this one, this one, and this one. Okay, so this can be called the uh, ballistic regime. This can be called so-called uh, the diffusive regime by uh, 
an abuse of, uh, of terminology, but uh, here the, the reinforced process grows essentially like the original process. Uh, here, you, it's uh, super diffusive. Oh, sorry, it's, um, I'm always confused. Here is super diffusive, but it's sub-ballistic. So the, the reinforced random work grows faster than the original process, but still slowly, more slowly than the ballistic. And here is the contrary. It's a super ballistic, so you go faster than linear, but still more slowly than the uh, original random work. Okay. So let's give the, the three um, precise state. Ah, no, before giving the, uh, the statement, let me make some, uh, some comments. So imagine first that you, we will, we will analyze uh, the, the functions that you obtain for alpha fixed when you let the uh, innovation uh, increase. So it means that we will <coughs> cut our diagram here for some alpha greater than one, and also here for some alpha between zero and one. So if you take first alpha, greater than one, then the, the graph of the uh, exponent hat alpha has this form. So you start at one, it remains constant. At one, uh, then you start to grow linearly until you get to the alpha. And once you've reached alpha, it remains like this. Now the, the scaling exponent, essentially, uh, if you want to measure the speed of growth of, uh, of your random walk. Uh, it's not given by the scaling exponent, it's given by the inverse of the scaling exponent. And so this means uh, that the more you reinforce your, uh, sorry, the, the larger the innovation is, uh, the more slowly the random walk grows or stated in, uh, in the converse direction. The reinforced random walk grows faster when the innovation is smaller. So you go faster here than here. And the, the explanation for this is, uh, is as follows. Uh, so you, you are working with random variables which are in the uh, so-called normal domain of attraction of a stable law. Alpha is greater than one. And it's known that uh, in that case, it imposes X to have a first moment and the first moment to be zero. And roughly speaking, when you just look at uh, the original random walk, uh, so the, it's large time asymptotic behavior is, uh, depends very much on the fact that, uh, let's say that uh, the positive and the negative uh, increment compensate each other. And when you are starting to repeat uh, certain steps, then you are perturbing this uh, compensation between positive and negative steps and up to the point that you will uh, eventually uh, disrupt it completely and then uh, the reinforced random work will start uh, growing faster than uh, the original one until it reach this uh, ballistic uh, speed. When you now work with alpha less than one fixed then you see kind of an opposite figure. So you start, uh, so in terms of the, the reinforcement parameter, you start at one, so here you are ballistic. And then the uh, alpha hat decreases, it's, so it's no longer a straight line, it's a hyperbola. And when it's reached uh, the level alpha, then it remains constant. So again, uh, this is the, the graph that you obtain for the scaling exponent. And for the random walk, it means that the random growth walk uh, now grows faster when the innovation is larger. So it's uh, the opposite dynamic as uh, previously. And the way you can understand it is, is as follows. So you, you have now uh, a random variable X, the, the typical step, which belongs to a normal stable of uh, attraction. Uh, and in that case, the expectation of uh, the absolute value of X is always infinite. And it is known that the, um, the position of your walk after a large number of steps depends 
very much on its largest increment. So the, essentially, uh, when you are reinforcing the, when you are running Simon's algorithm, you are repeating certain steps a large number of times, and you are delaying the occurrence of exceptional large steps, which actually play a major role in the growth of, uh, of your work. So the more you reinforce your, uh, your process, actually you are delaying these uh, exceptionally large steps, which play a, a crucial role in its uh, asymptotic behavior. So that's the explanation of the, the two different uh, figures that you, that you can observe. Okay, so let, let me state now the, um, the, the four main uh, theorems uh, with the specific uh, assumptions. So the assumptions are in fact more general, sometimes more general than the one I just uh, discussed. And we, we start with uh, the ballistic behavior. Okay, so ballistic behavior, this occurs when the innovation is, is slow. So you have a parameter rho between zero and one. And you assume that you have a beta. Essentially, you can take a beta is, is the alpha. I use the different notation to stress that uh, uh, the hypotheses are, are no longer the same. Uh, so you have a beta which is uh, greater than rho. You assume simply that the innovation, the, the number of innovations that you have made until the nth step is a uh, big O of n to the power rho. So it's less restrictive than, uh, say, uh, regular variation with, uh, with exponent rho. And you also uh, assume that the, the two-sided tail of uh, your typical uh, random variable x is a big O of x to the power minus beta. So this is uh, certainly something that you have when you assume that x belongs to the domain of attraction of a stable beta distribution, but it's significantly weaker. And uh, when those two conditions are fulfilled, then you have a kind of a, a law of large numbers. Uh, there is the almost sure convergence of the step reinforced random walk normalized by this uh, factor n to the minus one. And the limit is some uh, non-degenerate random body. Um, so the second uh, strong result is both uh, sub-ballistic and uh, super diffusive. Uh, so we are going uh, clockwise uh, in, uh, in, the, in the picture I just showed. We assume now that uh, the reinforcement parameter is between one and two. Um, and so we know that it corresponds to some, uh, we can write it in the form uh, one over uh, one minus Q. And uh, the total number of innovation, essentially when N is large, is like uh, Q to two. Uh, Q times n. Okay. Uh, and here I'm requesting slightly more than the uh, convergence of sigma n divided by n converges to Q. Um, so you see that this quantity is uh, little o of n by assumption. Uh, you multiply by n to the minus 2 and you want this series to converge. So it's essentially it says that uh, sigma n over n converges to Q but not uh, too slowly, uh, like uh, if it converges with rate uh, one over logarithm square of uh, n, it's sufficient, for instance. And you assume uh, also that uh, you have an, uh, a parameter beta uh, larger than rho, and that your typical step fulfills those uh, couple, those pairs of uh, conditions. Uh, the expectation is equal to zero and the expectation of uh, x to the power uh, beta in absolute value is finite. Uh, again, so this is something which is uh, always uh, satisfied uh, if you are making the assumption that x belongs to the domain of attraction of some uh, stable law with parameter uh, alpha, which is uh, a bit larger than beta. This is uh, classical things uh, that you can find in the literature. Okay, so in that case, uh, you have again a kind of a law of large numbers with a, a random limit. But uh, the difference is that you have to renormalize your uh, step reinforced random walk by n to the power 
one, uh, sorry, n to the power minus one over rho. Uh, and now rho, uh, one over rho is, uh, is something which is uh, less than one, meaning that uh, uh, the behavior is both sub ballistic uh, but still it's uh, larger than the alpha, so you are also super diffusive. And this is a, a convergence in some uh, L, uh, L beta space. So these were the two strong limit theorems. Now for the weak limit theorems, we are a bit more familiar with the kind of hypothesis that we may have. Um, so the, the diffusive behavior, so the, essentially this means that uh, uh, you do not see at the level of the scaling exponent, the difference between uh, the original random walk and its uh, reinforced version. So you assume that you have some Q between zero and one, and that's exactly the, uh, the assumption that we had for the, the preceding uh, theorem. So essentially uh, Q of N divided by N converges to Q and not, uh, not too slowly. Uh, we also assume that uh, X belongs to the uh, domain of the normal attraction of a stable law. So this means that uh, the following uh, limit theorem holds in, uh, in distribution. So you take your original random walk, you rescale it by n to the power well, minus one over alpha, and this converges to a, a stable distribution. And we assume further that the uh, alpha is uh, less than rho, so we are uh, below the diagonal uh, when uh, alpha is greater than one. Uh, when alpha is less than one, this condition is automatically fulfilled because uh, rho is uh, greater than one, we are in, uh, in the steady innovation region. Uh, so then uh, the, the step reinforced random walk now renormalized by n to the power minus one over alpha converges to some uh, alpha stable random variable. And the, the last theorem uh, is both for the super ballistic and sub diffusive behavior. So now we assume that the uh, the, the typical step belongs to the uh, normal uh, domain of normal attraction of a stable law alpha with exponent alpha. Alpha is between zero and one. And uh, we assume that uh, innovation is slow with uh, exponent rho between alpha and one. That was uh, the, the last remaining case. Uh, we also assume that uh, the total number of innovation is uh, regularly varying with exponent rho. Uh, so typically you may think that uh, uh, sigma of n uh, is like uh, n to the power rho or a constant type n to the power rho, or you can also put some uh, slowly varying function if you, if you wish. And then the, you have a, a weak limit theorem. You have to rescale uh, your state reinforced random walk by the number of innovation raised to the power uh, minus one over alpha. And uh, remember that uh, sigma of n is like uh, essentially uh, n to the power rho. So meaning that the in terms of n, uh, this quantity here is like n to the power minus rho over alpha. And the limit again is some alpha stable random variable. Okay. Um, okay, so there are four theorems. But actually, uh, I, I will not give uh, details of uh, the four proofs, but um, they are very, uh, very similar. At least uh, the strong result follows the same patterns and the proof for the, the weak convergence uh, follows also from the same patterns. And they are all based uh, on the analysis of the number of repetitions. So what, what is that? So you, you recall this, uh, algorithm by uh, Simon, which we started from. And so you, you fix uh, an item, xj, and you count how many times you have uh, repeated this item up to the end step of the, uh, of the algorithm. So this is a quantity uh, which I denote by nj of n. And it's uh, it's crucial to understand the asymptotic behavior of those, uh, those quantity as n tends to infinity. And you want, in a sense, uh, to determine the, this uh, jointly for all j's. Uh, so I need some, some more notation in, uh, in this setting. So 
you, you recall that this uh, sigma n is the number of uh, innovation that we have until the n uh, step. And I denote by tau, it's the, essentially the inverse of sigma n. So tau of j is the first time uh, at which the uh, jth item appears. So that the first time at which uh, sigma n reaches j, or the first time at which uh, when you count the, the number of the appearance, you get one. And in all the assumptions that we had, so we know what is the asymptotic behavior of the sigma n, and therefore deducing the asymptotic behavior of tau j is, uh, is an easy matter. Essentially, yes, it's uh, just the, uh, the inverse. The other quantity which uh, plays uh, an important role is this uh, function uh, pi of n. Um, so it's a bit more complicated, so it's given by a product, but let's us, uh, analyze what it does. Uh, so rem you remember that when the uh, epsilon j equals one, this means that uh, you have an innovation. Uh, in that case, the one minus epsilon j is zero, meaning that uh, pi of n does not change. So pi of n is equal to pi of n minus one. And at the opposite, uh, when you have a repetition, so you uh, increase uh, pi of n minus one by this, uh, by this factor. And then, again, uh, you can easily analyze the asymptotic behavior of those quantity. Essentially, you, you take the, the logarithm, which uh, transforms the, the product into a sum, then you have logarithm of one plus something, something is small, so you can, you can easily analyze the, uh, the asymptotic behavior of pi n uh, in the different regimes. And what you see, uh, if you use this uh, notation uh, to indicate that uh, the limit of a of n divided by b of n exists and is uh, strictly positive and finite, then uh, pi of n is of order uh, n to the power minus one over rho in the steady innovation regimes and of order n in the uh, slow innovation regimes. That's an, an easy, uh, easy exercise. And the, the, the key lemma in, uh, in our an analysis is the following. So th there are some uh, mild assumptions that one has to make on this uh, sequence epsilon n, which decide whether you make uh, an innovation or you, you repeat some item. I will just put them under the rug. They are not so, not so important and uh, actually uh, easy to check in, in practice. Okay, um, so you're, you recall that nj of n is the number of times that you have repeated the items j up to the n step. Uh, so you divide it by this uh, function uh, pi of n, which we just introduced. And you look at this process for n larger or equal than tau of j. So after you have seen for the first time the uh, object j appearing. Otherwise, of course, it's uh, equal to zero. So then uh, this quantity is, uh, is a martingale. So you can check it easily by, uh, by uh, looking at uh, Simon's algorithm. Uh, and you can check that actually it's a square integrable martingale. So it, uh, by computing the, the quadratic variation and, and playing a bit seeing that the quadratic variation is integrable. So it has a terminal value, uh, gamma j. The uh, first moment is, uh, well, it's clear because, uh, so you look at, uh, at the first value of this quantity. So this is uh, the first moment, one divided by uh, pi of tau of j. And the second moment is uh, essentially of the same magnitude. So by this symbol, I mean that it is uh, bounded uh, from above and below by constant time, uh, time this quantity. Okay, so this is uh, the technical part of it. Uh, but once you have done uh, this, well, you, you are in good shape because we have just explained how you can estimate the, the pi, what is the asymptotic behavior of pi. Uh, tau is just the inverse of sigma. So everything here is essentially uh, explicit in terms of sigma. Okay, so let me briefly sketch the, the proof of first of the strong limit theorem. So these are, this corresponds to uh, alphas which are larger than rho. You are above the diagonal. So you first write your uh, step reinforced random walk S hat as a sum of the, of the items in uh, Simon's, uh, Simon's algorithm. 
And uh, it's exactly given by the sum of the xj times uh, the number of times that you have repeated the item xj. So this is uh, trivial. Uh, you divide now this by a pi of n. So uh, you get this. And uh, this uh, ratio, nj of n divided by pi of n, this is exactly the martingale that we had before. So we know that it converges to the uh, gamma j. So essentially, all the matter is to check that you have uh, sufficiently uh, uh, good estimates to prove that uh, you can exchange limits and sums. And so you, you arrive at, at this, uh, this uh, result in, in red. I spare you the, the technicalities. Uh, let me just mention briefly, nonetheless, that on the right hand side, uh, the series may be uh, may diverge in absolute value. So this uh, this series here is really uh, viewed as a martingale limit. So you take the sum for j equals one to n, and then you let n tends to zero. If you put absolute values, the series may diverge. For the weak limit theorems, so it's a, a bit more. Uh, complicated. So you, you have to introduce the uh, characteristic exponent of the typical step, which I denote by uh, phi. So uh, you look at the characteristic function of x, and you know that for uh, theta uh, small enough, or theta equals zero, you get one. So for theta small enough, this quantity uh, remains in the neighborhood of one. So you can take the, the logarithm of it. Uh, so you denote by the, the continuous determination of its logarithm is a so-called uh, characteristic exponent. Uh, and then you, you do the following calculation. I, um, I will look at the characteristic function of uh, uh, s hat n, and I compute it given Simon's algorithm. So this means that I know exactly at which step uh, which are the uh, elements which I repeat and which are the elements which uh, are innovations. Uh, what I do not know are the precise value of the x i's. So I know what is the algorithm, but I do not know what are the x, uh, x uh, j's here. And so this uh, integration, this expectation, is an integration against the variable x j. Okay. So this first formula is, is clear. I just replaced the uh, s hat n by the formula that we have seen before, uh, the number of uh, times xj has been repeated times xj. So there is nothing new here. Um, but then um, when you apply the, when you want to express things in terms of the characteristic exponent phi of x, so you see what is, uh, what is important is to know uh, how many variables have been repeated exactly k times. So if a variable xj has been re repeated k times, so this means that, uh, so you have to repeat, to replace here nj by k. Uh, the xj's are independent. So this will give rise to a coefficient uh, phi of times k to the power of uh, k alpha, k theta, sorry. And uh, the factor here is precisely the total number of items which have occurred uh, exactly k times at the end step of the reinforcement algorithm. Okay, so this is uh, the main, uh, main equation here for analyzing the uh, characteristic function of uh, S hat. And uh, on the other hand, we know from uh, Simon's uh, algorithm that if you uh, divide, if you look at the ratio between the number of items which have been repeated exactly k times divided by uh, the total number of items that you have, uh, then this converges to this uh, Yule Simon distribution. Okay, so for its, each case, so this is uh, the mass of the Yule Simon distribution. On the other hand, uh, it's uh, also a classical fact uh, that uh, this was done by uh, uh, Ibrahimov and Linick in the famous uh, text work, uh, textbook that they, that they wrote, that if you assume that uh, the random variable x belongs to the normal domain of attraction of an alpha stable distribution, then its uh, characteristic exponent has uh, an asymptotic behavior, which is uh, given by this, uh, this formula here. And the, the limit uh, phi sub alpha is the uh, characteristic exponent of uh, the alpha stable uh, variable to which x is attracted. 
So this is uh, an important result which uh, can be found in the work by uh, Ibrahimov and Munich. And once uh, you have done, okay, it's uh, some easy manipulation where you have again to check that uh, you can exchange some uh, limits and sums, but it's not uh, a big deal. Uh, but you can compute the, uh, the limit of the uh, characteristic function of uh, S hat n divided by uh, sigma n to the power one over alpha. And you get this expression. So you have the uh, characteristic exponent of the uh, stable law here at times some constant, which is uh, given in terms of this uh, uh, yule Simon distribution. Okay, so basically this is the uh, ideas of the, of the main proof. And let me uh, finish with a take home message. Um, so you have your, uh, your random walk and uh, you want to uh, speed up your random walk. So what you may try is you reinforce it. And indeed uh, it goes uh, much faster, uh, but this is not always true. So the reinforced random walk uh, goes much faster if uh, the step of the random walk is in the domain of attraction of an alpha stable law with alpha less than one. Uh, but if you are uh, with an alpha which is strictly less than one, then instead of uh, speeding up your, uh, your random walk, uh, reinforcement will uh, slow it down. Okay, so that was uh, my take home message and the, the end of my, uh, my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jean. Um, are there any questions? If anybody would like to ask one, please just say in the chat or, or raise your hand um, in the participants list. And um, perhaps I can start with one. Um, so you had two alpha stable random variables. You had, well, there were various alpha stable random variables, but you have the limit of the original random walk and then you have the limit of the reinforced random walk. Mm -hmm. What's the relationship between those two? Was it just a constant factor difference or? Uh, sorry, can you, can you repeat again? I, yeah. So you have the, the alpha stable random variable, which is the limit of your original yeah. random walk. Mm -hmm. And then there's the alpha stable random variable, which in certain cases is the limit yeah. of the, uh -huh. the reinforced random walk. Yeah. Were they just a constant factor different? Yes, uh -huh. right. they are and just they uh, a constant factor difference, uh, but the, the constant um, depends. So actually, yes, I should have, uh, I should not have stopped my, yes, so the, the constant is, uh, is here. It's uh, sometimes called the, uh, the, uh, the scale factor, I think in the, when you are dealing with, um, with stable distribution. Um, and so it, it depends uh, on the reinforcement parameter and it's always uh, larger than, uh, than one. So well, it's, uh, it's clear because the, the yule simon distribution is a distribution on, uh, on uh, one, two and so on. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you have uh, here, you take the, the case moment uh, with order alpha, so it's uh, always uh, larger than one. So meaning, it means that you're, um, even if you do not see the effect of uh, speeding up your, uh, your random walk by, by this reinforcement at the level of the scaling exponent, uh, it still has an effect uh, when you are looking more uh, finely uh, at the scale, uh, the scale factor of this stable distribution. So this, uh, this scale factor here depends on the, on the row and the, um, the smaller the row is, meaning that the more you are re reinforcing your, uh, your random walk, uh, then the, the larger uh, C is. Um, and things uh, end up with, uh, as I briefly mentioned at the beginning, those uh, Yule-Simon distribution have, are heavy tailed uh, variables. So for, um, you, you can see the, uh, the phase transition uh, at rho equals, uh, I think it's alpha, or yes, at rho equal to alpha occurring here in the sense that when, um, when rho is uh, larger than, uh, than alpha, then this quantity becomes infinite. I see. Okay. Thank you, that's very clear. Mm. Um, uh, a question from Andy Wang. I, Andy, I'm, I'm going to unmute you so that you can, you can ask out loud. There you go. Go ahead. I don't know if you can hear me, Andy Wang. Okay, possibly. I, he's, 
Oh, let me un no, nope. doesn't seem to be wanting to unmute. So maybe I'll ask it out loud. He says, um, were the epsilons always independent of the x's or is some dependence allowed? Uh, no, that's a good question because it wasn't uh, maybe clear at the, at the beginning. <coughs> Actually, I'm, uh, I'm uh, always um, assuming that the uh, epsilon are deterministic at the beginning. So the, if you want, yes, they are independent of the, uh, of the exercise. Uh, once you know how to deal with deterministic uh, sequence, then it's uh, easy to, to deal with a random one. Um, essentially, what you, what you need is to ensure that your random sequence of uh, bits fulfilled the, the hypothesis of the, the main uh, theorems. Um, and if you take them random, uh, then indeed you need to assume that they are independent of the random variable uh, x1, x2, and so on. But uh, what I, maybe where was it? So for instance, um, yes, for instance here, um, you, 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 you do not need to, to assume that the uh, epsilon i's are independent or whatsoever. What, the only thing which matters is that the, uh, the number of innovation that you have made until the end step is uh, at most uh, n to the power of o as, uh, as n tends to infinity. Or uh, for the other results, it's, uh, it's very, uh, very similar. So it's, uh, the, 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 the theorems are given for deterministic uh, sequence of uh, bits, but you can uh, easily uh, extend it to uh, random sequence of bits, provided, of course, that uh, these sequences are independent of the uh, x size. And then perhaps a question which maybe isn't so natural, but I'll ask it anyway. Um, if I allow the step distribution, my random walk, to depend on n also, is there a sort of Levy analog of this story or is yeah, no, 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 it's, <laughs> it's, um, it's a very good question. But actually, I, I'm saying it's a very good question just because I uh, kind of uh, answered to it uh, in another paper. <laughs> well, I guess what you are mentioning are for uh, triangular arrays or... Uh, exactly. yeah. mm -hmm. so, um, so, so, yes, in, uh, in another paper, I, uh, I was considering the, the analog of this uh, reinforcement. Okay, let's, let's stick to the case where your, your epsilon are uh, ID Bernoulli. Mm -hmm. uh, and what you want to reinforce is a Levy process. So you, you have a, a process in continuous time and you want to reinforce it infinitesimally. So what you do is you take a small uh, time subdivision and you perform this uh, reinforcement. So it's a bit like what you are suggesting. So you, you are dealing, uh, so the, sorry, the xi are, in that case, the increment of your Levy process on a small time interval of duration n. And you let n tend to infinity. Uh, so you are looking at a smaller and smaller division of times. And um, yes, there is, uh, so there, there is, uh, uh, a limit result. So you, what you want to define is the, what I call the, the noise reinforced uh, Levy process. And this procedure uh, converges. So you get uh, an object uh, in the limit, but only in the case when the uh, blumenthal Gitour uh, index of your Levy process is uh, smaller than the, the parameter Q of your Bernoulli random variable. So this corresponds to these uh, diffusive or, uh, I mean, these are the, the weak limit theorems. Mm -hmm. And if, uh, so the blumenthal Tour index is the uh, kind of an extension of the notion of uh, exponent for stable uh, distribution. And for uh, a stable Levy process, uh, the two coincide. And when you, the Levy process is in some sense close to a stable, uh, Levy process and the Blumenthal and Gitour index is uh, index alpha. And if um, if you are not in this uh, in this regime, uh, then I would say at this level of generality, uh, it does not. Uh, you you are repeating uh, too often, and you uh, you cannot expect any any sensible limit. Mm -hmm. there, there are some exceptions, but in general, your uh, things uh, go a bit crazy, and you will get limits which are uh, either you are renormalizing things uh, too strongly and then you get zero as a limit or uh, too weakly and then uh, it's too wild to yeah great thank you very much
I, I can't see any other questions in the chat, so I think it just remains for us to, um, for me to stop recording and then we'll thank you by unmuting everybody and, and having a round of applause. So. Um.